The HD25 is a legendary headphone from Sennheiser originating back in 1989. It has undergone numerous revisions but remains unmistakably an HD25. Shout out to the good folks over at Sennheiser for sending the HD25 for review. They are not paying me for this evaluation and they are seeing this review the same time you are seeing them. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. The Sennheiser HD25 is a sealed on-ear headphone and is part of their professional line specifically for monitoring and studio work in loud environments such as broadcasters, DJs, cameramen, you name them. It retails for around $150 and is locally available for 14,000 pesos through authorized Sennheiser distributors in the country such as JB Music. The look has remained largely the same throughout the years with very minor iterations and improvements. The HD25 comes in a rather plain Sennheiser cardboard box where you only get a quarter inch adapter inside. There is a plus variant that contains a pouch, an additional pair of pads, and a longer cable. For a headphone of this type, I would normally want a portable carry case, but the HD25 is well known for being rugged despite its mostly plastic construction. The pads are made from synthetic materials that don't pretend to be luxurious in any way. The cable connection is double-sided but designed in a way where it just comes out on the right side. It's a two-pin connector going to each cup and they're color-coded to indicate which one goes where. The 3.5mm cable is 1.5 meters long which I think is an average length, perfectly sufficient for portable use but if you need to move around while plugged into an amp, it might be a bit tricky. I find the HD25 a good looking headphone with its matte black color and compact design. It's one of those rare headphones that look just fine and not weird when you see yourself in a mirror or while facing a webcam while wearing it. Just look at how funky these other headphones look on my head. Being a DJ headphone, it has some adjustability features that are not very common, like the ability to tilt one of the cups sideways, which is useful for one ear listening. It also has this split headband for a better fit and security, say if you need to move your head more actively than usual. I'm happy to say it's relatively comfortable for this type. As an on-ear headphone, it sits on top of your ears which is less ideal but the clamp of the HD25 out of the box is just right. I thought it would be too tight, similar to the old Biodynamic TT1350 or T51P, but that wasn't the case. I'd say fundamentally it's not as comfortable as a similarly weighted over-ear headphone but I've been able to use it for a full day or commute without any issues whatsoever. The HD25 is one of the better on-ear headphones in terms of passive noise isolation. It's no noise canceller but during my trips, I was more than happy with its performance. Compared to other sealed headphones I have, I'd say it isolates passively better than the ZMF Polka and the Hi-Fi-Man Sundara Close, which really isn't saying a lot to be honest. From memory, the DT1350 from Biodynamic bests it because that one's a bit more clampy. But nonetheless, the HD25 still did well here in terms of passive noise isolation. Moving on to the sound, I haven't had much experience with on-ear headphones over the past half decade or so as I've fully transitioned to using full-size headphones at home and just very simply pixel buds for walking around, commuting, or exercising. And I know these small headphones will really sound inferior compared to what I'm used to and relatively speaking, they are of course. The HD25 is unmistakably an on-ear but once you get past that, you'll realize it has a very good sound for its type. First off, the HD25 has a punchy and lively sound, especially for its compact size. It gives you solid bass extension, though it has a bit of a mid-bass hump which gives it some extra emphasis in that region. The lower mids can feel a little overshadowed by the bass but the upper mids are quite forward, helping vocals and instruments cut through the mix. For the treble, there's a slight elevation here and that can lead to some sibilance, especially with sharper sounds in louder volumes. The overall sound signature leans a bit edgy and hard at times which might appeal to listeners to enjoy a more energetic presentation. As for the soundstage, it's on the smaller side which is not surprising. The presentation can feel a bit congested but more as a byproduct of this type of closed back portable headphone. Having said that, the sound is quite coherent overall. Everything comes together nicely and the result is a well-balanced experience, especially for its intended purpose. I mentioned earlier that I used it for commutes and for that purpose, the slightly bassy note and forward mids were actually favored as the outside noise kind of lessens the overemphasis on certain frequencies. Once I've settled in, all I can think of is that the HD25 is a lively, punchy and energetic on-ear headphone that's enjoyable for casual listening. One thing to note, while the HD25 does benefit from an amp or DAC, the difference isn't night and day. It doesn't scale up that much so you're not missing out if you don't have any amplifier. 
These headphones still sound great directly from most devices. A few comparisons starting with the DT1350, I find the DT1350 more laid back but somewhat muffled compared to the HD25. Otherwise it's an excellent option for this application and I wouldn't mind going with either. Compared to the Odyssey Sign, the HD25 is closer to your typical on-ear sound whereas the Sign sounds bigger, more like full-size scans. It shouldn't be surprising as the Sign has a bigger form factor to house those large planar magnetic drivers. It's also harder to drive and can sound lean on most portable devices. Those are really the only two headphones I can compare the HD25 to as I no longer have many on-ears in my possession. I think the on-ear category is slowly dying out as they don't seem to be as popular as they used to. But one thing I'm sure of is that even if the category fades into oblivion, the HD25 will still remain. As a headphone for monitoring use in loud environments, it's a complete package. Good sound, very good passive noise isolation, great usability, and exceptional durability. I'm not a DJ or a sound professional, so I don't know what else there is to expect from a headphone of this type. But as a casual listener's headphone for commuting or walking around where you want something you can throw in your backpack without worrying about it getting damaged, the HD25 is still great. It's a tricky offering for this use case though as it's up against tough competition. Noise cancelers cheaper IEMs, and even traditional sealed full-size headphones that are less portable but bring the audiophile experience closer on the road. I had a great time with the Sennheiser HD25 as it allowed me to revisit my previous love for on-ear headphones. It's a fantastic buy if you're in the market for a headphone of this type, and it's also a decent option for a portable commute headphone that isn't massive and doesn't need batteries to work. Plus, you don't really need to be delicate with it. Check out the HD25 on Sennheiser's website at sennheiser.com or through local Sennheiser distributors in the country. That's about it for this review. Thumbs up the video if you like it. Subscribe for more headphone.ph video reviews and visit headphone.ph for the text version of this review. I'll see you guys next time.